All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you once again for joining the webinar today, Getting Max Mileage Out of Your Budget Forecast with Argus Enterprise. My name's Erica DeBreezy, and I'll be your presenter today. Just very quickly before we get started, um, a couple of housekeeping items. I do have a colleague with me here today um, that will be answering your questions since there are quite a few of you on um, the webinar. So if you have any questions during the webinar or we'll have a, a Q&A session at the very end, he is going to be answering those questions and we will definitely uh, dive into the product if necessary at various different points based on those questions. And then in addition to that, this session will be recorded and it will be uh, given out to you all after the presentation. So you will be able to share this with your colleagues and review it again if necessary. Now, moving forward, um, just a couple of things about what you'll be learning today. So we are going to go through an effective method for interacting with property managers and asset managers in Argus Enterprise to track the actual data you need, how we can quickly apply aggregated actual data to budget tracking reforecasting. So this is really around being able to capitalize on the data that you have in your property management or accounting system to use it to better budget and reforecast forward, as well as taking a look at various different key Argus Enterprise reports um, and cash flow functionality that boost your budget visibility. Typically speaking, what I like to do is actually go through the um, budget process within here so that um, you all can get a sense of really how those property managers and asset managers can interact with one another. There are various different uh, facets of the solution, such as the workflow processes and permissioning and things of that nature that really help streamline this overall process so that you can do it in one place without having to use various different disparate systems. Um, this demonstration will go for approximately 25 minutes 20 to 25 minutes. And then, like I said before, if you do have any specific questions, there is a questions box in your GoToWebinar console that you can begin to answer questions in regards to. So without further ado, um, I am going to access Argus Enterprise so you can see what that looks like and actually go through the overall demonstration. Now, first and foremost, uh, starting on the backstage here, really within Argus Enterprise, um, you have a setup of various different uh, portfolios. These portfolios are intended to take you through kind of uh, the overall real estate life cycle. So since we are looking at that budget and reforecasting process today, I'm going to be working in my operating portfolio. Now, before we get into that operating portfolio and look at the, in, uh, the details behind the overall budgeting process, I do want to mention the various different scenarios down below. A lot of our clients uh, will use this base scenario to update their properties on a regular basis. As mentioned before, because Argus Enterprise does have a SQL database backend, it does allow for the connectivity to third-party property management or accounting solutions. Now, this is not out-of-the-box functionality. Um, it is something that is set up with our services team. But what we do like to provide for you is um, the flexibility to connect with any third-party system. So if you're working with a Yardi, an MRI, a JD Edwards, an SAP, maybe a homegrown system, um, we are agnostic in that fact so that it really uh, – eliminates the duplication of data from your PM or accounting system um, and then re-entering that data into Argus Enterprise. So that base scenario really comes into play because it will allow you to have your factual data be updated within the platform. So updating your tenant information, your actual data and things of that nature. Now, in addition to that, um, obviously you do want to have a locked down version of a budget potentially. So within Argus Enterprise, um, once the budget process has been completed, you can actually archive that particular scenario. And then what it does is it creates that repository of those assets and how they've changed over time. So we'll look at some reports later today, like a cash flow comparison, a budget comparison, a month and year to date variance report, where you can actually compare various different scenarios in the platform in itself and really utilize that data that's in your database. Now, a couple of things to make note of that are actually quite, impo quite important. Um, our services team can assist you in setting up a chart of accounts within Argus Enterprise. This is obviously key because if you do want to compare actuals to budget to forecast, you will need that chart of accounts set up. It can be the same chart of accounts that um, you 
are using in your PM or accounting system. So that's definitely a possibility to create kind of that uh, data flow across um, both platforms. And then another area by in which our clients use quite a bit is actually the classifications area. Now, because you are going to have different property managers or asset managers working and having access to various different assets, you can set up these classifications and they can really be anything that you want them to be. So what this ends up doing for you all is allowing more security settings to be set up in the platform, various different kinds of views that you can assign to your property managers or asset managers, and then being able to very easily and quickly slice and dice your data when you are using these classifications for reporting. Uh, you will see I have some examples here. You know, it does span just beyond property and um, asset managers, but other things like a region, maybe if you have assets in a fund, you have a specific types of properties that are a little bit more detailed than just our standard mm -hmm. property types, you can set these up and manage them. Now, last but not least, I did mention um, the security settings. So what you'll see is as we start to work through the platform, you may have various different roles set up where you have budget admins or budget users as well as individual users. So you do have the flexibility of turning off your various different tabs, whether it be the reports or the input tabs within Argus Enterprise uh, so that you can really control who has access to what. And then even down to the various detail uh, by in which if you don't want someone to be able to export data out of the system, that is an option as well. Now, one final thing, and this is really up to um, the individual users, and this is kind of all the stuff kind of on the setup side or the back end. Uh, what we have found is that to allow for better collaboration amongst individuals in the organization, a lot of our clients will set up workflow statuses. These, much like the classifications, can be anything that you want them to be. Uh, so you can set these, and um, as the process is underway, uh, people can start tagging the assets with these various different statuses, and then from there they can add commentary. So it doesn't necessarily require an individual to email someone else to figure out what that is. If a property manager has updated those assumptions in the Argus Enterprise um, environment in the portfolio user interface, another individual can instantaneously come in, see what that status is, and then communicate further from there if necessary. So after all of that's been said kind of on the backstage, let's dive in to the overall budgeting process and show you how quickly and easily this can be done. Um, I know we just kind of ended budget season, if you will, it was completed a couple of months ago. So what I'm gonna do is pretend like I am completing my budget for um, 2019 and actually locking down that budget. So what you'll see in my models is I do have updated actual data for a certain time period, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, look at my assumptions, update the assumptions if necessary, as well as going into the various different reports and then locking down a final budget. So very quickly, opening up the uh, operating portfolio that we have here. Typically speaking, as mentioned before, we will have individuals that will only have access to the various different properties that they will be working with. So for example, if I was property manager A, I might be only viewing my properties that I'm working with. Um, same thing if I have um, asset manager. If I was an asset manager, I might filter down to a specific asset manager, like asset manager four. Now with this, um, what we'll be doing is simply accessing a property. All properties that you will want to be, that you have access to and you have open to will be listed on the navigator on the left hand side for very ease of use with utilizing something like Argus Enterprise. Now on the main user interface, whenever you access a property, in the bottom section are the input fields. You do have a tab that is simplistically listed as actuals and budget. Now this is where your locked down data is going to lie. So if you are um, importing an actual data either through integration or maybe through Excel for ADW or just simply copying and pasting that data, it will lie on this actual tab. You can see I have actuals out um, in the past pretty far and then all the way up until a certain point of time, so December of 2018. I also have the budget data here. So you will notice once we've actually locked down the budget data, this budget data will be updated for the 2019 period here. So currently it lies blank because I have not completed that budget process. 
Now, this is actually not the only area by in which you can update your information and see that data. You have the flexibility of viewing this data on your reports as well as viewing it on your um, expenses and revenue screen. So through the budgeting process, depending upon if you're you know, a leasing manager, a property manager, depending upon what your overall role in this process is, you'll be accessing the various different tabs. Um, another thing that I will make note of here, for those of you that are Argus Enterprise users today, you will notice that there are some tabs missing down at the bottom. There's also some tabs missing across the top. This is because, like I mentioned, I am limiting the view of a property manager or asset manager. Um, and that can be done across the top in your view section. So in this case, I'm not showing valuation results. Um, results or the actual valuation input here because it might not be important to those individuals um, that are doing that budgeting process. Now through here, um, your tenant information is going to be pretty standard. So hopefully you'll have factual data being updated across the board. This is going to be going off that lease ID. So it will update uh, the particular tenant's information associated with that lease ID that might be matching in your PM system that you have. And really it's about, you know, kind of forecasting these tenants. If you have tenants that are going to be you know, vacating, you might want to make some assumptions about them. If you have tenants that you know for sure are going to renew, you may want to tag them as a contract renewal. But the tenant section is effectively going to be very similar to what you're doing today on an ongoing basis. Where um, your actual data is going to be displayed and where it might vary is actually if we move into the revenues or expenses tab. Now there's really two different views here for um, the budgeting process and it's up to you as an individual user what you prefer to be completely honest with you. So one of the options is actually to flip into the budget view. Now the budget view within here, what it'll do is it'll display a certain time span based on what you've selected across the top. You're also able to display your certain number of years and then as we start to expand this data out, you will be able to see a variance um, of your budget, your budget versus forecast, your budget versus actuals as an absolute variance or as a percentage variance. And then in areas by in which you don't have a budget set, so you can see in my forecast here, I am able to update this information. Now, the reason why um, it's not showing a budget yet is because that budget has not been locked down. What we allow for you to do in Argus Enterprise is have a property manager enter in the budget information in the forecasted field. Then, typically speaking, it's transferred over to an asset manager to review that model. And then at some point in time, um, there's an approval process that takes place, and that budget is actually locked down as a forecast. So what we'll see here moving forward after I lock down that forecast as a budget is that it'll add in additional lines and additional information into this particular view. Uh, this view is extremely nice because you can extend values or copy your years. You can also copy and paste data here. And then of course you can see those variances without actually having to go and report. There is very easy to use navigation across the top to skip between various different accounts. And then if needed, you can actually add notes to the bottom section. These notes can then be displayed on your reports if you choose to do so. So as mentioned, this is one type of view that you can work with. Another view within here is just simply detailing out your line items. So for example, if I go back into that real estate tax expense here, or if I go into you know, insurance or something of that nature, by clicking on this ellipses, what happens is it opens up your detailed window where you're able to see your amounts, which is your forecasted results or standard Argus Enterprise um, inputs, your actuals and your budgets in the red and green colors. And then from here, if you want to, you can copy and paste. So I could take prior year actuals, Control C, paste those in, Control V, and then I can copy my column to the end. And effectively, I've used prior year actuals uh, to copy and paste those moving forward. I can also directly within here update my inflation rate. So I could use a different inflation category or hard code in a value there if I chose to do so. And then you still have the same options across the right hand side by in which you can add various different notes.
So your functionality is not limited by any means by using the budget view. It's really just a personal preference of how you want to look at that data. Um, you also might notice that I have my kind of groupings together as well. So I can come back down here and ungroup uh, based on parent account number, and then I can look at every single one of um, my expenses that I might have. Your revenues is going to look very much so the same within here, so those listed out. Um, and then you still have all of your market assumptions that can be updated as well. Uh, you will notice that some of these market assumptions are limited by the view, but once again, it's up to you all of how you set those security settings. Now, let's say hypothetically our property manager has gone through the process by in which they've updated all of their re uh, expected revenues, expenses, tenant information, and there needs to be approval process that takes place by the asset manager. Um, once this saved, we're actually going to move into back into the uh, properties user interface. Right. I may want to go ahead and change a workflow status. So for that bank center property that we were looking at before, I may want to indicate that you know, it's not budget approved, but um, the market values were inputted or the property and lease inputs were done. And then as an asset manager, I may come in, see that that's been completed, and then go ahead and review those results. Now these results may be reviewed by looking at the inputs, or as mentioned before, you have a variety of different out-of-the-box reports available to you. A lot of the reports that are available within Argus Enterprise, you have the flexibility of choosing which data sets you want to view on those reports. So when you move into something like your cash flow report, you have options to show actual forecasted budget data within here. Um, it is just a matter of moving into your report options and deeming what set of data you want to see here. You can also change your print interval if you want to. You can change your begin date, end date. So you have quite a few options here. And then with your commentary that was added on some of your line items, you have the option to select that those notes will be printed on the report. So as I scroll down to my real estate taxes, I have a note that I had placed on my input screen. Now, from here, um, you have the budget comparison report. So once again, another report. Um, this report can be shown on various different print intervals. And then more importantly, you are able to select which types of variances you want to see on this report, as well as your notes that can be displayed, and then a month and year-to-date variance report. Now, I know I don't have my valuation report being shown currently, so I'll go ahead and turn that on. But if you wanted to look at your expected returns or anything of that nature on your valuation or return summary report, you have the option to turn on that data set as well, right? So um, really by having all of your actual budget and forecasted data, you are presenting almost more accurate reports, more detailed reports based on all of your assumptions, rather than just looking at things from a forecasted perspective in here. Now, a lot of these reports are not only available at the individual asset level, but they're also going to be available at the consolidated level. So as we move into our reports across the bottom, we have once again, cash flow detail reports with actuals, budget, and forecasted data. I have different lease expiration reports. So it might be important to you, maybe as an asset manager, to run a lease expiration report and see all the tenants expiring in the next year. And you might want to group this by property manager. All of your columns, you'll notice, are sortable. So you are able to see when those expiration dates actually take place. So I have a few tenants across the top that are expiring in the next couple of months, and they are rolling to market. So obviously we need to potentially budget the cost um, associated with those tenants rolling over to a spec space or to um, an, a brand new tenant, hopefully, within that individual space. So that's something that's pretty key. Um, you have a budget comparison and a month and year to date variance report just as before. What I will note here is that um, it is fairly important, and I'll rerun these for you real quick, but it is fairly important to note that a lot of these reports, you can actually add commentary to them. So when you're looking at these reports, you may want to indicate you know, 
why there is a variance. And with these variances in here, you can actually save them down into the report so that if you have another individual run the same report, that will be available to you as well. So this is taking all of my properties into consideration right now. And then you will notice I have some parameters on the left-hand side that indicate that I'm showing my actual versus budget, budget versus reforecast, and budget versus actual variance here. And I do want to show that commentary. So as I expand these line items out, because I saved the commentary within here, I have, you know, tenant turnover high, which is indicating, you know, that's why there could be potentially a very large variance in that particular asset. Now, one last thing um, that is obviously of importance because this is a budget and reforecasting webinar is actually focusing on locking down that budget, right? So what we've talked about so far is really taking that actual data, um, prior year budget data potentially, and then utilizing that to reforecast moving forward. But the finalized budget is only complete and updated on the budget tab as well as the other various different input screens that I showed you before when the button is pressed. Now, a lot of our clients uh, choose to do budgets at different points in time, lock down budgets at different points in time, um, and really what Argus Enterprise allows you to do because your budget is really just the first year of your forecast moving forward, is select that time frame. So on the main user interface, you can do this for one asset or multiple assets, um, but permission will be given to certain individuals in your organization to copy the uh, forecast to budget. So by clicking this, setting my time frame here, so you can do it for you know less than a year, more than a year, um, moving out forward, it is going to do just that. It's going to take my budget, my forecasted information, and then lock it down as budget data. So once this has been complete, I will go ahead and move back into my bank center model, and I will show you the results there. Now I am just completing this simply for one asset. You can do it for a group of assets if you choose to do so. Obviously that's more, more efficient if the budget has been approved. And then you can certainly always close out of these jobs and they'll continue to run in the background in the queue. So you can just check them whenever they might be ready. So we'll access Bank Center. Um, let me refresh this model. So it's recalculating these results. And then I should see my updated data for 2019. So all of that's been done and it took all of about you know, 30 seconds to actually copy those results over. So by having your property managers and your asset managers working off of one main source of the truth, this obviously reduces the time it takes to actually complete that budget. Um, in addition to that, having your security settings set up, your uh, specialized views within here, you can really control who has access to what and who is able to update certain assumptions um, to make you know, that data transparency that much better and easier. And then you do have your output of all of your reports by in which if I were to move back into my property level report and flip into my report options, I may want to be looking at that actual budget and forecasted data. I'll make one tiny additional update here, and then we'll be able to see those results on screen. So the calculation is going to be underway. What you'll see here is that this will go from actual and forecast to actual budgets up until I have them and then into my forecast. So hopefully you all were able to get a um, very quick and high level overview of what the budgeting process is within Argus Enterprise and how you can maximize the use of external data to help you use it uh, further uh, budget and reforecast moving forward.